boring, boring. The rock I'm talking about. We've just got way too much exposed rock around this place. Now, I love some natural rock as much as the next designer, but you can only have so much of a good thing. This is also a lovely courtyard area that we don't use much because it's so uninviting, and it's a main entrance way into the garden. I need a feature, I need something practical, and I've got a tight budget. Well, I have a cunning plan in mind. I'm going to use the same techniques you use to build a timber retaining wall to create a garden bed, then I'll cap it all with sleepers, dress it in a way that makes it look a million bucks, but it'll still fit within my tight budget. I'm going to use treated pine for this job, all safe ACQ, not CCA. 75 by 200 millimeter sleepers for posts, 50 by 200 for rails, and 90 millimeter wide decking for dressing up. I'll hold the wall together with ACQ safe 100 millimeter bugle headed batten screws. Every job runs smoother when you've got a clear workspace, so out goes Wally my pine. Then it's measure and set out. Mark the corners, use a straight edge to get the front straight, and then a square to check your corners are at right angles. Now clear away where your bed will sit and get the waste well clear of your work area. Right, that's all my preparation work done. Now I can get round to building my garden bed. Because I'm using the same principles as a retaining wall, I only need a post in each corner and one in the front. The post holes will just be big enough to take a generous amount of concrete to secure everything in place because it's not a major retaining wall after all, it is just a garden bed. I'll probably go down 600 millimetres deep to secure those posts well and truly. Now, my wall is only going to be 400 high. Check with your local council before you build anything above 400 because you may just need permission. Well that's all my post holes dug to my satisfaction. Now I'm going to do something that may seem a little odd and I can do this because I've got a, a firm level surface to work on. I'm going to put my first rail down and then I'm going to clamp it in position when it's nice and level. That way I can go along and I can measure for each of my posts, cut them to size, drop them in their holes, fix them off with 100mm bugle batten screws and then concrete them in place. Then it all comes together just like Meccano for grown ups. Right, well that wasn't so hard was it? Like I said, it's basically the same technique you use for building a retaining wall except I've used it to create a large garden bed. The next stage, I'm going to cap around the top with sleepers and that'll form the foundation for a big bench seat. Time now for our first stage of dressing up. I'm going to clat across the top of all of my sleepers with this 90mm treated pine decking. That'll give the whole thing the appearance of a big bench seat. Position your first piece of decking. It should overhang by around 25 to 30 millimetres. Clamp down, pre-drill, countersink, and then screw down with 50 millimetre screws. I've just left my slats squared off so I can cut the angle in situ. It gives a neater finish. Just set your power saw to the thickness of the decking and then trim with a hand saw to finish. Seat cladding finished. Now it's time to dress up all the faces. You'd be right in thinking that at this point in time, my timber garden bed looks like a timber garden bed. Well it's this stuff that's going to change that. This is called blueboard. I bet they had to workshop that name for a while. I'll cut this to size, I'll give it a coat with a texture paint and then I'll clad the front and sides of my garden bed with it and it will take on a completely different appearance. Well, I'm nearly ready to put my cladding on the front. What I've done though, you'll notice, is I've put a couple of extra blocks in the centre. That's just to take any drumminess out of the sheet once it goes on. Now, the sheets are held on sort of by screws, but the main thing that holds them on is actually glue. Construction adhesive. Apply it generously to the face of all the posts your sheet will contact. When you're working with larger sheets on your own, it can be a little bit hard to get them in place. The best idea is to do what I've done. I've pre-drilled and countersunk in the centre so I can just quickly get a screw straight in to hold it in place. And make sure you countersink when you're using blue board because you want to be able to conceal the screw heads easily. That's the last of my cladding on, but looks a bit average at the moment. I'm going to fix that with one last bit of decking. I'll put it along the front, underneath here and around the sides, and that will make it look like the bench seat is completely integrated into the base. And my last trick to conceal the corners, aluminium angle. The angle's not structural, so I can just fix it in place with my magic construction adhesive. It's high tack and will hold firmly while it sets. Well, I've got a load of quality soil to fill my garden bed up with. You'll notice I'm leaving the centre empty. That's because my main plant comes in quite a large bag. It's a bit silly to fill the whole thing up with soil and then dig it out again to put your central plant in. So I'll leave that empty, plonk my plant in, and then fill around the sides of it.
When you're positioning a feature plant like this, you really want to make sure it's in the right spot before you commit yourself to backfilling around it. Make sure it's nice and centered in the bed, if that's the look that you're after. Then check that it's got the best face looking out. You want it to look the best it possibly can from the angle it's going to be seen most often. So position it, get out, have a look at it, and move it around as you need to. Once you're happy, just fill around the root ball and level off. Now for my planting under my lemon myrtle feature tree, Cordeline Electric Pink. Along the front, I'll soften the transition from paving to bed by adding Mondo grass. I bought it in a bulk tray and just divided it up. A quick coat of oil for our bench sheet. And no bed's done until it's mulched. And once you've spread the mulch, give the bed a really thorough water. To fill up down the sides, I'll put in this new Dianella variety, Forte. I have to admit, I'm a wee bit biased about this one. It's my first ever commercial plant release. But what do you reckon? For less than 250 bucks, not counting the plants and the soil, I've got myself a new garden bed, a new seating area, and a fantastic feature for when people walk into the garden.